In this video, I'm going to be showing you the new Perplexity Online LLMs that just came out. So these are a first of its kind LLM API that allows you to have both fresh content as well as arguably content that has fewer hallucinations, especially when you're querying about recent events where models like say GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 might have a lag and not have that underlying context of something like that happened either yesterday or a week ago or something along those lines. So there's two models that just came out. There's the 7B online model and then the 70B online model. So the 7B online model is created from the Mistral 7B model, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of and familiar of. And then the uh, Perplexity 70B online model is trained from the Llama 70B model. So there's an interesting blog post that I encourage you to look through and read through on all the different ins and outs of these models, sort of the motivations behind them, what they're helpful for. And there is also some good examples of where it performs better than something like uh, GPT 3.5 on a lot of metrics. Now, I'm gonna be showing you in the video how to set this up within your code. So if you want to set this up within a project, you'll be able to do this by the end of the video. I'll also show you where you can go ahead and play around with this in a playground if you want to just sort of try this out and see how well it works. So the interesting thing with this is I actually asked uh, in August if there was any um, plans for offering an API. So I had been using Perplexity for quite some time and I had the thought that it would be great to be able to access what they're using under the hood for those quick responses from their core offering. And at the time, and this was only in August, they said they don't even have any APIs planned at this time. So fast forward a little bit to October, that's when they first released the Perplexity API. So this was at first uh, released just to the pro members and it was released completely for free. So there was some rate limits and things like that, but it gave you access to a handful of models like the Llama models and the Mistral models, as well as a handful of others. So the one thing to note with this, and, and sort of it goes without saying, is these are all very new, and there are some things to consider. So for instance, from when they were first released just last month in October to now, there are already some models that have been deprecated. So I believe like the model from Replit, as well as I think the 13B variant of Llama, uh, I don't see within the documentation anymore. So if you're looking to build something and use this, say like, the 13B model. Um, I can't say how long it will be there. I think it's moving out of beta, so I think it's becoming uh, a lot more stable where you'll, you will be able to increasingly use these things more and more, and any deprecations probably won't be as abrupt as, as it was from last month to now. Now, to actually go into Perplexity just for a moment. So if you're not familiar with Perplexity, it's a very simple interface. And what it allows you to do is ask questions of things that are recent, and it will give you that sort of chat GPT-like feel, but with a lot of extra bells and whistles. So you see here that it has a little co-pilot that you can either turn on and off. Uh, it has these sources that it's reaching for where it does some web scraping on the fly. And then it also has some images and follow-up questions. So this is sort of the general um, uh, perplexity core offering here. Very powerful. I use this every day. I'm a huge fan of Perplexity itself. I'd encourage you, if you uh, haven't tried Perplexity, try it out. I also have a handful of videos on Perplexity on my channel, both building a product that's similar, but then also just a general overview if you're interested in diving into it a little bit more. So if we go uh, just over here, I'm just gonna be showing you how to set up uh, this from the API. So the first thing that you can do is if you just go to docs.perplexity.ai slash docs, you will see the screen here. Now the first thing you have to do is they have the APIs within your Perplexity account. So if you go over to the perplexity.ai slash pplx dash API, this is going to be where you have to enable like you see here. So you just have to set up your payment method. And if you're already a subscribed member, you can just say that you're gonna use the same uh, billing information. 
So right off the bat, it might take a few minutes for your credits to show up. So if you're a pro member, you get $5 worth of credits every month that will refresh um, that you're able to use. You can also top up and all of that good stuff from here. Now, once that's all set up, you can go ahead and generate your API keys. So I just have mine hidden here, but you can copy them and you can generate multiple and whatnot. So I'd expect this will probably grow and expand over time as they start to build out this offering some more. So while you're on this page, if you go ahead and just generate and copy one of the API keys, we'll just save that just for a moment to our clipboard and I'll show you how to get this all set up within VS Code. So another thing I wanted to point out to you is there are some other things within the docs here. So if we go over to guides on their docs and we just scroll down here, or rather, Rate limits. So here's a list of all the different models that are available. So there's Mistral, there's Code Llama, there's Llama 2 70B, and then there's the Perplexity 70B chat, and then the online ones. So today I'm just going to show you uh, these models here, but just know that if you want to leverage these other models, they're also here as well. So I'm just going to head over now and open up a completely new directory where we're going to get started with everything we need to get set up from their API. And also while we're here, I'm just going to pull up the API reference on the left hand side here. So as you see here, there's a number of different languages that you can use to set this up. And it's also an interactive um, uh, set of documentation. So if you actually toggle around some of the things here, it will go ahead and put it within the example request, which you can subsequently copy over to your editor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using bun in this example. So I'm just gonna say bun init dash y. So this will give me a, a simple structure. So it's sort of like npm init. It will give me the TypeScript file and everything that I need. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bun install API. So I'm just gonna bun I API just like that. And while I'm here, I'm also going to touch.env. So within your .env, so if you still have within your clipboard that API key that we copied, you can just go ahead and put it in here just like this. So I'm gonna be using perplexity underscore API underscore key, and you can put in your API key just like that. So don't forget to save that out. And once that's saved out, you can go ahead and close it. So next we're going to go within our index.ts. We can just get rid of this hello bun. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a similar approach to this example here, but we're just going to make a couple tweaks. So the first line we're going to take is the line one here. So while this looks like it could be something like an API key, this is just an ID that's referencing the library for their SDK here. So don't think that this is an API key and I'm exposing it here. That's just referencing uh, the actual SDK wrapper to interact with their model itself. So once we have that all set up, what we can do is we can SDK.auth. Now the thing that's nice with bun is we don't need to install something like .env. We can just reference that directly. So if you have a .env within your directory and you're using bun, you don't need to have that additional package of using something like .env. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, move the messages uh, above the actual query here like they have in the example. So we're gonna have our message content. So there's our system prompt. We're just gonna say be uh, precise and concise. And then within our message, we're gonna say, um, this is a, a bit of a broken example, but I'll just say what came out in the last version of Langchain. Just to get a sense on uh, what version it's going to reference, how dated it is and whatnot. And then once we have that, all we're going to do is we're just going to post to the chat completion and I'm gonna start off with the 7B online version. So once we have that, we should be able to just go ahead and bun index. So one thing to note is as this is loading and I'll just pull this up here, 
is there are some streaming options within here. So if you'd like to set up streaming responses, you can enable that, you can pass it in just like you see here. So you can stream true. You'd have to just uh, output those all those tokens bit by bit or have a mechanism to do so. So depending on how you're going to be doing that or what you're gonna be doing that for, that's just a, a sort of an extra step here. In this example, I'm just gonna keep it really, really simple, a handful of lines of code and show you how you can quickly get up and running with this. But just know that that is an option within the offering here. So uh, back to our question. So in the last version of Langchain, which is 0 .0, uh, 0.0.331, so if I just copy this over, and let's just paste it right in here. So we see this was seven days ago. So already just from that query alone, we know that it's reaching out to information that is relatively recent. Now, the other thing that I did try is if I say something like, what is the news today? So I tried this example earlier, and the thing that I found with this is what it actually gave back was similar to this, where it's referencing almost the metadata of some of the top news sites, and it's not actually telling me some of the top news. But if I was more specific and I said, what are the headlines on this particular news site? Uh, potentially it could do better, but I'm gonna leave a lot of these things for sort of your exploration. So if you wanna toy around with it here, you can go ahead, set up this uh, quick example. I'll put all this code in the description of the video where you can just copy it over and get started. Or similarly, just go within their docs, pull down an, uh, an example and play around with there for whatever use case you're trying to set up. So the other thing I wanted to point out before I close out the video is the uh, uh, the link to labs.perplexity.ai. So this labs is their interactive GUI that you can access online and you can just try these models. So if you don't want to try it within the code, within the API, you can just go ahead and try it within this uh, labs.perplexity.ai interface here. So if I say, uh, tell me, about the last Golden State Warriors game. And I query that. You can see that it's getting information that was from yesterday. You can see some information about the game and whatnot. So just a, another avenue. This is something that I'm definitely going to be playing around with a lot more um, just to see what is it good at, what could it be better at, um, and all of those good things. So that's pretty much it for this one. The one thing I do want to point out is if you're interested in this type of content, I have another video where I built out a LLM web scraping API, which is sort of similar to this. Um, it's not definitely not as quick, but it does offer some sort of general know-how on how to set something like this up on the back end. And I also have a perplexity clone that I built with Langchain and Next.js where it builds a perplexity-like uh, interface where you can go ahead and query something similar to their core offering. So that's it for this one. If you found this useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.